I've wanted to do this for a long time. These are good friends of mine. And join us as we tell their story in just a moment. You know, I believe what the Bible says, and the Bible explains where we came from. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 23, it says, After God had taken Adam, put him to sleep, and taken his rib out, or a piece of flesh out of him, and Adam saw that he made that into a woman, here's what Adam said. Listen carefully. It says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she has been taken out of man. What is amazing about that is that she was not brought up from the dirt. She was taken out of the living man and God gave the man his breath. So here we have man and woman and when they come together and get married and get God in the center of their marriage, things get straightened out. It really is interesting. Watch this because I think you're going to like it. The most known, yet most underread book in the world. What is it? It's the Bible. It is known by millions, yet undiscovered by millions. The Bible is a book rich in the knowledge about us and about God. Come along with us as we explore this beautiful book full of God's wonder and discover what it really means to be human. From the first book of Genesis all the way to the last book of Revelation, join us. People determined to know what the Word of God says. For your sample copy of the Bible Discovery Guides, contact us at Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. We're in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Or simply go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. As I said before in previous programs, Nigeria is my favorite country because of the people. And two people who are wonderful, one's a Canadian, one's Nigerian, but they both have a feeling of Nigeria inside them. They're great people. Colette and Izzy O'Hiro, they are with me today. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing very well. How are you, Pastor? I'm doing great. Now, now we've done two programs. We yes. did a program with you. Yes. And we did a program with you. Yeah. And it was exciting. And so I've got both of you now. Yes. Now, I just need to say, Okay, Izzy, that you are the one who said, I told my friend I'm going to marry that girl. <laughs> Before you even really understood and knew her. Yes. Yeah. And she tells me she didn't know that, no, did you? No, I didn't know that at all. <laughs> and yet at the same time, you're here and you're married. And so he was right. Yes, he was right. He was right. <laughs> somebody, was, somebody was speaking to him. He was right. Yeah, somebody yes. else. The Lord yeah. has it in his plan. But you're... you're this is a, an amazing story, yeah. and just to briefly go through it, mm. uh, you were born in Ottawa. Yes. But you're from Nigeria. Your yes. parents were from Nigeria. They came over to school, born in Ottawa. Yes. Then you moved back. Yes. Through a number of places, but you moved back. And then you were born in Nigeria, always been in Nigeria all your life, yeah. born in the oil fields and the whole business. Yeah. And you're, go you're in school together. Yes. And you're studying together, and you meet each other. Here's my question. I heard about how you met her, but how did you meet him? <laughs> so I had a project that I needed to do. It was my final project for my university to graduate. And uh, so my lecturer, who uh, was um, directing me in that project, 
said, well, the, the topic you've chosen has to do with building, um, you know, a model of a theater, of a, of a, of a stage, mm. of a production. So I got a, a, a literature book and uh, of a play and it needed a set built. So I wanted to build a miniature version of it. And there were parts of it that I couldn't get done. So my lecturer said, well, I know this guy <laughs> who <laughs> will be able to help you. I'm like, whoa. Really? And said, yeah, easy. And, um, and then this same lecturer was also doing, um, he was doing a production, a television uh, film production. And I was in the cast, and he was also in the cast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're cast members, and you didn't even know. We were okay. cast members, we didn't know about each other. So sure. he now told me, I said, I don't know this person, and how am I going to interact with this stranger? He says, oh, don't, don't you worry. He will come to my office, and I'll introduce you. So you were introduced by your lecturer? Yes. Wow. That's how you met him. Now, and I remember. <laughs> Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and I remember sitting in my, you know, lecturer's office, and then here comes this young, handsome-looking guy, <laughs> and he walks into the office, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, is could this be the guy?" And then, you know, my lecturer said, "Yeah, yeah, is it me?" You know. What was your first impressions of him? I thought he was, uh, my first impression, well, you know, coming from not, uh, you know, a spiritual, uh, then I was in the world, I was like, wow, he's a cute guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could work with this one, you know. And then he was quite gracious and everything, you know, we exchanged uh, pleasantries and yeah. And then we started working together and then we, and then we happened to, know, uh, you know, know that we were also cast in the same uh film short, short production that our lecturer was doing it was like wow yeah so there you go so you didn't know yeah that he had said before you're the one never he's gonna marry never okay. and he didn't know that the lecturer it was me because the lecturer had told him so, that this yeah, so what would you what'd you think of her i mean i don't know what you thought of her but then you're talking about this girl but then there she is i'll tell you something pastor Rod. it was <laughs> the biggest setup in my life. I had taken my friend to see her. She was having a production on the stage and I saw, and I, I saw her, well, the first time I saw her on the stage, my friend had not seen, uh, was not with me on that day. I went up there, I was just like, what are they doing up there? And so I look at my, oh wow, that person is my wife. So I went up, that, so going back to my friend now, I went to the room, I said, come, come, come. I have seen somebody, he goes, don't tell me it's the same person that I was trying to explain. Them. We went together. Then I said, that one. She goes, you don't mean it. Guess what, Pastor Rod? I never saw her for some time after that. Mm. The f it was about a month later. I saw her in that office. So I was So there's like, a month between yes! when you first saw her yes! and when you met together. In Absolutely. Office. I never saw her after that day. And I kept saying, the girl that I saw, I can't see fine on the campus anymore. And then the lecturer is talking to me about the project. I don't want to do this project. What project is it? <laughs> it's her project. Yeah. I want to do that project. And so she, he says, come, come to my office. I want to come help, come help somebody. I'm like, okay, I'll just do it. So, so that's amazing. That's so awesome. how long did you get together and date before you knew it's time for you to get married? I mean, you knew, but how long did you... So we, we met January of that year. And so we just decided, I mean, we're getting along, we're talking, and we decided to be friends. Yeah. So we were, about, we were friends for about six months, not knowing that he was interested in me. I didn't say a word. At all. And then one day he goes, well, there's this girl I'm interested in in your class. I'm like, lay it on, tell me who it is, I'll connect you. That's how you started. <laughs> That's how he said it. So, did you tell her? And then I just wrote it on a piece of paper. I said I wrote you. I turned it upside down. Yeah. And so, so you see that? And then <laughs> I was floored. I was. To, I mean, we've been friends. You need yeah. to understand this. We were friends for bodies. We were friends, yeah. sharing things yeah. and just you know hanging around, hanging out together and just yeah. just being friends. Nothing. Yeah. 
And then I was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so then you start dating and, then and we you started dating. decided to get married. Yes. Uh, th this is fascinating. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you're over here five years because you come back to Canada. And then finally, she, she sponsors you yes. to become Canadian. Yes. You come over here. Yes. Now you're married. You're in the church. Yes. Uh, in a Catholic to, church. You go to see your brother-in-law. Your brother. Yes. Your brother-in-law. Yes, my brother-in-law. And you had that experience. Yes. The two of you had that experience. Yeah. And so now you know the Lord, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. So let's pick it up from there. Yes. Let's go back and discover your children, yes. your kids. Tell yes. us about that. So we have two boys. Um, one is uh, his, 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 the first one is Valentino, and the second one is Jesse. The first one we just call him Tino for short, and then uh, Jesse. And you know they have been you know with us going to church with us they're I'm canadians going, yes they're canadians. canadians they were both born here uh tino the first one was born in montreal, montreal. and the second one was born in mississauga wow yes <laughs> that is excellent okay yes. so you get into this church and this you think that the music is great and you want the music to start and all of that yeah. and then the next week the musicians are gone what in the world happened yes oh uh, yeah that uh that was an experience uh, we we well we came back from florida we found a church and actually the i found a church and she found another church <laughs> and her friend was pastor and the husband so when, when i went with her i just let her have a way you know because uh I she's learned, your wife uh, yeah, exactly you know, i learned, you know. I learned on, you know, after you know a while, knowing initially, I would argue, but now I understand that if you have to live long, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you're going to survive. Yeah, life. yeah. yeah so I, let, okay. I said, okay, let's go to let's go see what your friend's church is like. So we went to that place and uh, um, we liked it, so we stayed. But the church that my home church today was the first one that I found in 2005, and mm -hmm. uh, we I think we came back to that to the home church. Uh, uh 2019 yeah 2019 so we came yes. back we, we returned back but in in between the times we went to um two churches we left the one that her friend um and the husband pastor and to the cousin's church the cousin was also a pastor who was going to start a new church so we, we joined that one to start the church and the day of the opening of the church we had a full house so i thought oh, this is beautiful but next Sunday, it was like, you know, when you go for a funeral, and after the funeral, everybody is gone. <laughs> and the bereaved is, you know, doesn't even have confidence anymore. That's how it felt. We were now like 15 people in the church, the original founding members of the church. And we didn't have the musicians who helped us the week before. So I said to the pastor, where are those guys who came to play? He says, they are gone. I'm like, why can't we have them, you know, come play for us? Oh, they're asking for money. I'm like, yeah. money? What kind of money? Let's give them something. Oh, no, the kind of money that they're looking for is the, is the type for our rent. Yeah. And we don't even have the money to pay the rent yeah. yet. We are thinking, how are we going to pay the rent? Yeah. So I said, oh. So we had a prayer meeting and we started, we, we said, we can clap our hands. We were, when we became born again, we were so on fire. We didn't mind. I said, okay, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord and tambourines. We have tambourines. Let's do it. Eventually, the pastor had a meeting and he says, I, the Lord said, shows me that there will be musicians in this house. Yeah. I'm like, from where? He goes, musicians will be raised from here. Yeah. Okay. When we come back, they have no musicians and the musicians will come from there. There are no musicians there. So what happens? We're going to find that out and more as Beyond the Call continues. A program experience delivering what God is saying to the human race today. Reading the Bible from cover to cover, we learn how God spoke to the people in the past, speaks about the future, and shows us how to react and respond to the difficulties and discovering of our lives today. Bible Discovery TV is a program hosted by the Hembry family as they uncover the meaning of God's message to planet Earth. To discover the meaning of God's Word and how the Lord is speaking to us today, visit Bible Discovery TV at 
BibleDiscoveryTV.com. That's BibleDiscoveryTV.com. I am having a great time, and I think you are too. Uh, th this is absolutely amazing with Easy and Colette. They are here. And the church you went to was exciting. And then the second week, nobody's around. And all of a sudden, the pastor gets up and he says, listen, well, those musicians want to be paid. We can't even pay our rent. Mm -hmm. So we believe God's going to draw from this church musicians. Yeah. What do you think? Both of you. What do you think? You've got training in... in Performing arts, not what do you think? Well, um, my I knew I had a lot of deposits in the arts, but music was not one that I thought I would ever pick up. Uh, I, I'm a, an artist. I'm a graphic artist. I'm a painter. I'm a sculptor. I do anything in the art, but not music. Music. The first time I saw a, uh, <laughs> a keyboard or a piano or anything was in the church. When we, he, she was uh, going to the Catholic Church, and I used to follow her too, so that's the, that was the first time I saw anything like that. But I, I used to wonder how, how, where, what are they? How do they know what to touch on these things? Like, so I, I had no knowledge. So when he said that, we were just a few guys in the church. We had more women because in, in the African co uh, community, we have more women going to church than guys. So she is saying that there will be musicians in this church. And we are about four or five guys with about 15 women. I'm like, I don't think this guy can hear from God. He's not hearing That's right. That's what you thought. Yes. I said, he's not hearing right. But that very afternoon after the church, I was just driving through the music store. And then I said, there's a music store here. Let me go in there and see. I went in there. And a keyboard, a Yamaha keyboard was on sale, like a major sale. The guy told me, this is a steal. That's how he said it. And I'm like, okay, I want it. So I got it. I... You know how to play it? No, I put it in the garage. <laughs> Pastor Rod, I put it in the garage. I hid it from her. Because she'll be like, you didn't know. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> that he bought anything. <laughs> I, I hid it. I put it in the garage because she's somebody, Colette is somebody who really believes God can do anything. So, still do. yeah, she still does. <laughs> she says, I think, because she had told me, um, I think you're one of the people. So, I, so that's why I couldn't bring out the keyboard. She told you She that. told me. She said, I think you're going to be one of the people raised. I'm like, me. <laughs> it's never going to happen. So when I got a keyboard, I'm like, this is just buying a keyboard by faith. I'm not, it's not for me. I want to donate it to the church mm -hmm. so that if somebody comes, they will play it. But it's in your garage. Yeah. In my garage. So I brought it out one day and I started hitting some notes and I, I don't even know what I'm doing, Pastor. He see, she says it's making sense. She has so much faith, Pastor. <laughs> it's making a lot of sense. I said, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So the pastor said, um, we went to the prayer meeting that same uh, week, Friday, and the pastor says, I think you will be one of them. I'm like, me? She goes, I, I see a lot of gifts in you. I see it. I said, how come everybody sees the gift that I, who is the one, don't see? The, convey, <laughs> the conveyor of the gift cannot see the gift. And, but truly, sometimes it's like that with God. You know, when God wants to use you, um, you don't even know what. You, I just saw, but I, I did say in the first segment, I said, when I became born again, I said, God, use, use me. Yeah. So I had to remind myself, you had said to, you had made a promise with God that you will serve in any capacity at any given time so amazing yeah. and now you play yes. on a regular basis in the worship team and all self-taught yes. yes it's amazing now you're in the church yes. and musicians now you do several things at faith gospel yes tell us about that so uh, right now i'm leading the blaze pan dance team it's mostly um, women, uh, young girls from the age of seven to twenty-nine years old, and yeah. So I do. We do choreography, present worship, um, prophetic dance, interpretive dance as well. So that's. You, so you do all of that. Both yes. of you are involved in worship, yes. that kind of worship. Yes. And you've had schooling in performing arts. That's right. And God has used your talents and your gifts that you learn. Amazing. Yeah. In the church. Yes. 
amazing. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Amazing. Did you ever, Never. either of you, think that you would be in the church using this kind of thing? Never. No. I thought I was heading for Hollywood. <laughs> you wanted to go to Hollywood. <laughs> And why would you want to go to Hollywood? I don't know. It was just a dream of a young girl <laughs> at the time, you know. But now I found God. I'm in the church. And my growing up as a young girl, I was in a, my parents were in a turbulent relationship. And so my, um, you know, growing up in that environment was sometimes uh, traumatic at times. And so... As a young girl, I did not have that kind of uh, self-esteem and just, you know, um, always second-guessed myself, wasn't really sure of myself growing up. And so now mentoring young girls in this capacity through dance is such a blessing mm. because then I can really tell them no matter what is happening in your lives, God loves you. And he's so pleased with you for bringing worship to yeah. him at this young age. Yeah. Mm. Such a blessing to do this. And I'm so excited about the work and just pouring into these young girls' lives, mentoring them. We do Bible study. We talk about the, the scripture before we do our dance practice. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and I'm praying with the girls and and being real with them, especially from my experience, the way I grew up. Not, I, I wish I knew God before, but his timing is perfect. Yeah. And so with that experience and that, you know, retrospect, just looking through, I'm able to speak into these young girls' lives. And that's just a passion in my heart. But using the vehicle of dance of worship and these girls they love to dance and just you know molding them and directing them and connecting them with the lord jesus and say you can have a personal relationship with him you can talk to him directly he can be your lord and your savior and we talk about testimonies just as you're doing on this program right now we talk about testimonies tell us so that they can start connecting that with god and say, he did this for me, he did that for me. I see it when, you know, there was an accident or somebody was sick. God did this to recognize that. And that's how we mentored our, our, our sons, you know, yeah. in the way of the Lord. Yeah. For everything that God has done, we're able to talk about it as a family and say, did you, did you see God in this? And they are able to say yes. And yeah. to come to church, not because we are saying come to church, yeah. but because they really want Wanted to come to, to, yeah. come to church. They get us to come to church sometimes when we are even tired. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's yeah. because a lot of people are tired today. Yeah. But, you know, I just need to say that you, you work as a nurse. Yes, I do. Uh, in the mental health department yes, at, uh, at the Brampton Civic uh, Hospital. 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 Yes, yes. And you do that full time. Yes, I do that full time. So... You work as a nurse there yes. and minister to people there yes. in your job. Yes. And at the same time, you teach the dance ministry in the church. In the church. So your life is full. Busy. <laughs> and and you, I, I, what, where, where do you work? I, I work with a community service center. So I'm a community worker. So you're a community worker yes. and you also play music yes. for the worship. I actually uh, was a finance analyst that I, and I changed my, my career because I wanted to work and mentor young people. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So both of you have jobs. Both of you work in the church. Yes. And you're involved with all of this. God knew that when he put this together. It's amazing how when we let God yes. do the things in our life yeah. that otherwise we would choose to do what we want to do. But then when we see God, suddenly we choose what he wants to do. That's right. He makes it unbelievable. He does. He makes it right. He does. He touched his heart and he touched my heart. Yeah. And that made the difference yeah. in our lives. Yeah. There, are, there are people watching now, yeah. and we've got a minute left, but there are people watching now and they need they're, they're desiring to understand who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Who is this? And can he change my life? Look into that camera. 
and encourage them to come to the Lord. Yes. I just want to tell you that there is nothing out there. Jesus is the only way. I tell you, you've had testimonies, you've had our testimony. Yeah. We didn't know where we were going. We had our lives that were scattered here and there. But after we submitted our lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit started walking through us yeah. and directing our path. Yeah. So today, the Lord is calling you. If you do not know him, it is now. Mm -hmm. It is right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I want to make you Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. And I want to make you Lord of my life. And once you say that prayer, he has heard you and the angels are rejoicing in heaven. He is truly a compassionate God. Yes. The Bible Discovery Guide takes you through pages of the most important book that you will ever read. It is the Word of God. Through careful exploration and thoughtful insight, we uncover the truths presented in the Bible. For your sample copy, write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. That's Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, write to Bible Discovery, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W 5G2. That's Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W 5G2. Or simply go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. I loved doing that story. It is absolutely great. And I, I think we need to remember if we're married over 40 years, like I am, or if you're married over 30 years or married over 20 years, remember this. I wanna to talk to the husbands. Husbands, remember what Adam said in verse 23 of chapter two of Genesis. When looking at your wife, he said, and this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She is just a part of him. That's very important as we consider the fact that our souls are equal before God. We have to know that and we have to understand it because God wants to do things in our marriage. He wants to do things in our life through our marriage that are not possible without it. And so let's pay attention to that and let's make sure that our marriages are in the place that God wants them. We love each other and we love the Lord first. Thank you.